Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna be unboxing and testing the soldering and hot air station, the 852D model. So stay tuned till the end because I will expose a very critical thing about it at the end of this video. So let's jump into the beginning. Uh, anyways, let's just start the unboxing process. There are a lot of different models and the difference in the name might be an extra plus or an extra small letter, but you could get a different machine at all. So please revise your model name at least a hundred times. There are a lot of manufacturers, so you might get a different material or quality, uh, not like mine. Let me now open the box and remove this foam thing and you can see that the device and all of its accessories are all wrapped in some sort of casing, which is good for keeping things safe. The first thing I'll get out is the soldering iron holder out with its sponge like thing. It's made for metal and my opinion its size is not too big or not too small, it's just quite good. Next is the pluggable soldering iron or soldering pen, don't worry I'll talk about it in a minute. And now I will get out the big machine itself. It's a little bit heavy, but it is okay. There is also an English Chinese manual included and some replacement tips for the hot air gun tip. The soldering stand is obviously made from metal to withstand heat, and its weight is nice to handle the soldering iron to be inserted into. The sponge itself is not small, and when it is exposed to water, it will grow very big and will be fluffy. This is the soldering iron, or in this case, the soldering pen. It's not like other normal soldering irons that plug directly into the wall adapters, it has a special plug that plugs into the soldering station itself. Its size is small and handy, yet it has a heater and a temperature sensor inside it. The tip is replaceable, and the tip which comes preloaded with this model is pretty fine and is awesome for fine soldering. Replacement is pretty easy and also fast. Those are the replacement tips for the air gun, so if you would like to choose to concentrate the air or scatter it or do what you would like. And lastly, the manual, which in my particular case didn't help me at all. It didn't even specify the power of the device. You might get a different manual depending on your manufacturer, so keep that in mind. Now, let's see the device itself. The soldering station comes joined with the heat gun directly. And for those who don't know what a heat gun does, it just melts the soldering wire used to solder components with super hot air. And it's widely used to solder what's called SMD components or surface mount devices, which are very hardly soldered using traditional soldering irons. The heat gun is preloaded with a medium sized tip which is okay. The tube itself is not very long and is a little bit thick but nevertheless it doesn't carry except normal air from the compressor in the device, that means it won't heat up. Connecting the soldering pen is pretty easy, just connect it in the right way into the plug into the soldering station itself. Uh, it's just the uh, don't care about that Now I'll get the soldering iron holder and put it in place 
I actually like that small tip in the soldering iron. Don't forget to remove the plastic thing on the tip so you don't melt it accidentally. Uh, it's just easy, don't, uh, don't care about that. Let's now bring that device to life. Be aware that if you use different models, you might have to unscrew something for it in order to work. The soldering station has three potentiometers, not rotary encoders, which means if you rotate them a lot and a lot, they might wear out. One for the heat of the soldering iron, and two for the heat and the airflow of the heat gun. The soldering tip also heats up very quickly, so do not touch it with bare hands while it's heating. The switch on the right side is the one for the soldering iron. There is a very useful display for the temperature of the soldering tip, as you of course could change the temperature depending on your needs. The flickering on the display is only visible to the camera, in real life it's just a simple and standstill display. I will heat up the tip a bit and measure the temperature of it using a thermocouple. On the multimeter, I read a reading about 20 degrees less than the one stated on the soldering station display. Also, when you move the knob, the temperature you want is printed on the screen. Yet, as you leave the knob, the screen returns again to display the real temperature showing the temperature increasing of the soldering tip, which is definitely an awesome feature. I will again measure the temperature and again about 20 degrees below the one stated on the display. I do not actually think that this is a big issue, plus this problem might be from me measuring. I will now increase the temperature into the maximum 450 degrees Celsius. While it's heating up, let me tell you that this is the first time for me to use a soldering station or even to hold one. So if you have any tips and if you have any comments about what I am saying, feel free to comment down below. Actually, while shooting this video, I realized that the thermocouple I had is not suitable for high temperatures, so I just stopped measuring because I think it will just put wrong values. The other switch on the right is the one for the hot air gun. As soon as you flick it, you will hear that. This is actually the air compressor inside the machine. Also, on the display, it will output dashes, and the machine will stop. But as soon as you remove the gun from its position, it will work again. And the temperature will be outputted on the other display. If you return it back, it will again switch off. You have two down knobs controlling the heat gun, one for the temperature of the heater and the other one is for the intensity of the blown air. Keep in mind that the strong the air is, the less heat is maintained and the wider the hot air will reach. I'll be measuring the temperature again with the multimeter and you and it outputs nearly the same results with 20 degrees. But something wrong happened when I was measuring the maximum 450 degrees heat from the gun. The tip smoked. I thought that the heater catches on fire, but after inspection, the replacement tip was not high quality, and it was the thing that smoked. I don't know, maybe this is the case for me, but also I realized that you shall not expect putting the gun in place and wait till the device switch off power. It won't, except at 100 degrees Celsius. So if you finish, just flick off the switch. 
The device is very good with two digital displays, it comes with a handy of accessories and it even have a fuse box of 5 amps. And at this point I will end the video, I really hope you like it, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.